with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording... The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the have that happy people have to say. Weedies, oh, weedies, and do, 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 and okay, okay. Hi there. This is the Lone Ranger speaking. Out here in the West, we have a couple of champions who are really doing okay. Champion Bob Maynard. He can grab a thousand pound steer by the horns and toss it to the ground like it was a three day old calf. And bronc busting champ Bob Burroughs. The way he can stick on a mean side winding bronc, you'd think he was glued to the saddle. They're both great rodeo champions and both eat Wheaties. Have been ever since they were youngsters. That's a good example to follow. Keep on eating your Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Colonel Corliss at Fort Hobbs near the Mexican border walked the floor of his headquarters office as he spoke forcefully to Captain Lennox. I tell you, Captain, something has to be done, and done quickly. We must find the men who are smuggling rifles and ammunition to the Indians in this territory. Yes, sir. But so far, we haven't been able to find a trace of them. Yes, I know that. Red Feather may be gathering the tribes to move against this fort. We haven't enough men or ammunition to withstand a siege. I know that only too well. Captain... Send another courier to Fort Terrett explaining the situation. Tell them we need reinforcements desperately. Yes, sir. I'll send the dispatch at once. You might also mention the fact that rifles and ammunition are being smuggled to the Indians in this territory. Yes, sir. I'll send a dispatch that'll make them realize just what we're up against out here. It was sunset when the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, stopped in a grove about ten miles east of Fort Hobbs and prepared to camp for the night. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's This grove will make a good campsite, Toto. Ah. The settlement where the Indian massacre occurred yesterday isn't very far from here. Well, me here from Indian friend, it's Chief Red Feather. Have braves go on warpath. That surprises me. From what I've learned of Red Feather, there must be a good reason for the way he's acting. That's right. Me think maybe someone's in trouble on the trail. Let's go. Get him out, scout. Fella coming this way. Three Indians, fella. Use your guns, Toto. We'll drive them off. Indians, turn, leave. Yes, hold over, hold. Hold, fella, hold. Thanks for driving off the Redskins. They all... You're masked. Forget the masked, soldier. We're friends. Well, you saved my life, so the mask doesn't matter. All three of those Redskins carried rifles. Well, so I noticed. I'm heading for Fort Terra for the dispatch. I think you'll be able to go on now without further interference. Oh, uh, how are matters at Fort Hobbs? The colonel fears an attack. 
The Indians are getting rifles and ammunition from someone, but we can't find out who's supplying them. Uh, why has Red Feather got on the warpath? Do you know? He claims an Indian hunting party was massacred by whites. That happened two weeks ago. I see. Well, thanks again for helping me, mister. I'll move on now. Adios. 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 Get up there. Get on. Get on. Get on. News not good, Kimasabi. We'll move closer to Fort Hobbs in the morning, Toto. We'll see if there's anything we can do to help the situation. The following night in Hobbs City, the settlement just outside the fort, two men were in the cafe at a remote table. One of them was saying... I've been trying to convince the chief that he ought to attack the fort before reinforcements come from Fort Terrace. He's called a powwow of the tribes in the valley to talk it over tonight. <laughs> You knew that was a good idea of yours to massacre that Indian hunting party two weeks ago? Sure. Gave us a ready market for those used rifles we bought so cheap just across the border. And we've been paid off well so far with the loot the Redskins got in the raids. You know, I was thinking maybe we ought to pull another incident to arise from enough to move against the fort right away. There's plenty of gold in there, I reckon. That is a good idea, Sandy. Look, Red Feather's son, Mua, is to ride to the border and wait at the big rock for us to come with the rifles. Then he's to escort us back to the village. Well, we'll meet him on the trail and plug him before he gets there. Then we'll get the rifles and come back. I know where the village is. The Indians won't bother us. When we tell Red Feather that his son was killed by a couple of troopers, oh, he'll get all the tribes to move against the fort right away. Hey, that's the answer, Griff. We better get going early so as not to miss more. All right, let's go. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto had moved into the hills near Hob City. <laughs> they had just returned to a campsite they'd selected earlier after making a trip to the outskirts of the settlement. As the two men prepared to unsaddle Silver and Scout, they heard a shot from down the trail. That come short way down trail. Yes, we'll go investigate. Maybe I'll... Listen. Sound like two riders. Yes, let's go steady. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Move to Get him up, Scout. Move. Plenty bright. That's a help. I think I see a figure lying on the trail, Toto. That's right. He see horse and cider trail. Push him. Oh, easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Hello, it's an Indian. Uh, let me turn him over. Uh, the pulse is still beating. Kimasabi. Him son of Red Feather. Are you sure? Uh, him name Muwa. If he dies, it means plenty of trouble. We'll take him back to our camp and give him first aid. The bullet went fairly low on the shoulder, but I think we can pull him through. All right, let's get him to camp. Uh-huh. At the Lone Ranger's camp, Toto, who was bending over the still unconscious Muwa, suddenly straightened up, listening. Kimosabi. What is it, Toto? War drums. You hear them? Yes, it means trouble. Ah, me think it mean Indians get ready to attack fort. It will mean a massacre if they do. That's right. Toto, the colonel must be warned. You stay with Muwa. Do all you can to bring him through. I'll head for the fort. It risky, Kimosabi. I'll take the risk. I'll warn the men at the fort, then I'll come back here. We can make Muwa pull through. It may be the one chance to stop the attack. The fort isn't far away, Toto. I won't be gone long. You said big fellow. Adios. Adios. Monsilver. Fort, Colonel Corliss looked up as the captain entered his office. Colonel, a masked man rode to the gates. We have him under guard, but he insisted he must talk to you. He says he brought important news. Bring him in, Captain. Yes, sir. Sergeant, bring in the masked man. Yes, sir. What's the meaning of this, sir? Colonel, I came to warn you. The Indians are planning to attack the fort at once. How could you know that? Does this silver bullet mean anything to you, sir? Huh? Silver bullet, eh? No, I... Wait a minute. You spoke of an Indian, Toto. That's right. Captain, did you see this man's horse? Yes, sir. He rode a big white stallion. Huh? 
Well, Cinder, I've heard of you, sir. You were put in an ambush against the troopers at Fort Stockton a couple of months ago. Colonel Morris told me about you. I've known Colonel Morris for many years. Yes, of course, of course. Captain, see this man safely through the gates. Yes, sir. Well, thanks, Colonel. Adios. Goodbye, sir, and good luck. continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, I bet your mothers remember when baking an angel food cake was a dreaded task. Well, it's a joy with Betty Crocker angel food cake mix. All the fine ingredients are right in the package, including the whites of 13 eggs and a special General Mills angel food flour. You just add water, beat, and bake. That's all for the highest, lightest angel food you've ever seen. In fact, it bakes up higher than any cake you can bake with the whites of 13 eggs. Mmm, and so delicious. And there's no guesswork. To turn out a perfect angel food every time. In fact, Betty Crocker guarantees a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Absolutely perfect. Or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. And Betty Crocker Angel Food goes so perfectly with any one of your favorite summer ice creams. You'll want to have it often. Someday soon, ask Mom to bake up a perfect Betty Crocker Angel Food cake. A light summer dessert for the whole family. Now to continue... Leaving the fort hurriedly, the Lone Ranger headed back toward the camp where Tonto was waiting with the chief's son, Mua. Meantime, deciding that the sight of Mua's body would infuriate the Indians to a greater pitch, Griff suggested that Sandy and Jeff go back and get the body while the Indians were dancing to the war drums. The two men stopped at the place where they had shot down Mua. Hey, Lou, the body's gone. Say... I wonder if... Listen. If someone's coming at a gallop beyond the bend. Let's ride into the Arroyo quick. All right. Come on, get up there. Come on, get him. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Hey. It was a masked hombre. Yeah. Look, he's turned off and is heading for that grove back there. We'll leave the horses here and sneak over there on foot. I'm curious about him. So am I. Let's go. The Lone Ranger rode into camp and hastily dismounted. A moment later, he stood waiting beside Muwa as Tonto gave the wounded Indian a drink of water. The Lone Ranger asked, Has he said anything yet, Tonto? Why, him just come to. Oh. Him ask for water. Now, maybe him able to talk. Muwa, you listen. Uh, me, Tonto, mask man, friend. We hear shot. Find you on trail. Last night. We try plenty good medicine to make you better. Uh, oh, uh, oh, life to Tano, friend. Do you know who tried to kill you, Muwa? Uh, two pale face. Them get rifle for red feather. Them go for more. Muwa go to bring him to village. Them meet Moa on trail, then try to kill. I see. Kimasabi, <coughs> Silver, give a warning. Yes, he's looking off to the side. Help me pull Moa behind that boulder quick. Uh, Let me do it. See. There. <coughs> Just in time. That shot came from among the trees over there. Oh, let's get out of here. All right. uh, two men run through trees. Maybe if you hurry, you'll catch him. Let them go. Right now, we have to get Moo out of the Indian village as quickly as possible. A 
After replacing Muwa's bandage and making him as comfortable as possible on his horse, the Lone Ranger and Tonto set out with the wounded Indian for Red Feather's village. They were forced to move at an easy pace. And by the time they reached the village, the Indian braves were already gone. Red Feather take braves of many tribes. Them go to attack fort. Pale faces tell him Chief Red Feather that Mua killed by two troopers. The men who brought the rifles wanted the Indians to attack the fort, Toto. That's why they tried to kill Mua. That's right. Make Mua comfortable in his father's wigwam. I'll try to reach Red Feather before the attack begins. Uh, adios. Adios. <laughs> Racing against time, the Lone Ranger urged the great horse Silver along the trail toward the fort. Faster, big fellow, faster. Come on, Silver. As he came close to the fort, the sound of battle was heard. The attack has already begun. Must get through the Red Feather. Come on, Silver. On a ridge overlooking the valley approach to the fort, Red Feather and the three white men, with a few under chieftains, sat on their horses watching the attack. Oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. Hi, Chief Red Feather. Hi. Man of the mask wants friends of Red Feather. Him wants say pale face want peace, not want to harm Indians. Me find him talk with crooked tongue. No, no, great chief. I spoke the truth. Those who bring your rifles spoke with crooked tongue. You must stop the attack on the fort. Troopers kill son of Red Feather. No, Muwa is not dead. He rests now in the wigwam of his father. He's lying, Red Feather. We saw Muwa shot down. You and your two friends shot Muwa. You aroused the Indians against the fort. Ah, oh, you dirty lion, cold cat. Hold oh, it! No! My arm! Get him down, Sandy! Loose! Yes. Hey, now. At the chief's words, the other Indians moved close and grabbed both Sandy and Lou, pinning their arms back and winding lariats quickly around them. Red Feather will go to village to see if man of the mask speak the truth. Wait, Chief Red Feather. Stop the attack until you do go to the village. If I have not spoken the truth, I shall be your prisoner. You may order the attack renewed. Uh, Drums will call my braves from the attack. That is good, Red Feather. But if Mu are not alive and at my wigwam, then the attack shall continue, and you shall die. Now we go to village. Hey! Inside the fort, the colonel anxiously watched the attack from one of the ramparts. Colonel, we can't hold out long. The ammunition is getting low. I was afraid of that. Look, the Indians are leaving. The drummers must be a signal for them to stop their attack. Thank heaven. Cease fire! Well, come on. We'll check the losses and check the rounds of ammunition that each man has left. The Indians had disappeared over the ridge, and the troopers waited tensely for a renewed attack. The colonel and the captain stood in the watchtower near the main gate, scanning the distant ridge. Suddenly, the captain pointed and spoke excitedly. Look, Colonel, huh? a group of Indians are coming over the ridge now. We'd better start firing. No, wait. They're white men with those Indians, and they're carrying a white flag. I can't quite make out... Captain... The mass man is with him. Tell the men to open the gate. Yes, sir. Sergeant, open the gate. Yes, sir. Open the gate. Right. I'll go down to meet them. The mass gone, Raywood. Yeah, three other white men. Oh, 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 oh. Red Feather and a few of the tribal chiefs. I've come to talk peace with you, Colonel. Ah, braves of Red Feather on way back to Indian Village. Them not attack anymore. Chief Red Feather has made a wise decision. But since you broke the peace treaty... Pardon me, Colonel. 
Red Feather was led to believe the treaty was broken by the white men. The son of Chief Red Feather told us everything. I don't understand. These three men whom we brought here as prisoners attack an Indian hunting party two weeks ago and kill them all. They shot Red Feather's son and left him for dead last night. How do you know all this? How and I found Muwa, the chief's son, and attended his wound. Just before Red Feather and the rest of us left his village to come here, Muwa told us he met these men on the trail to bring them to his father's village. Before they shot him, they boasted to Muwa about killing the hunting party to start trouble. Uh, Mask friend and Tonto, fine son of chief. Use good medicine. Make Muwa to live. Him say these pale faces shoot him. Them come to village later, tell Red Feather attack fort, get revenge. They still don't understand why they shot the chief's son. These three men had smuggled rifles to sell. They broke the peace between the Indians and the whites, then talked Red Feather into taking the rifles and paying them off in loot. Oh, uh, that right. Them think more soldiers soon come to fort. So them shoot Muwa on trail and blame troopers. Them want Red Feather to attack fort quick. Well, that's it. Captain, see that those three men are held for trial. Yes, sir. Take them away, Sergeant. Yes, sir. All right, come on. Sir. All right, hey. Come on, come on. Sir. Red Feather, you and your chieftains may go in peace. The great white father will understand why you went on the war path. But if you go on the war path again, you'll be severely punished. We leave now in peace. Red Feather not go on war path again. It's good we have friends like men who wear masks. Who are? My friend, you saved the day for us. I'm, I'm eternally grateful. Thanks, Colonel Corliss. Our concern is the same. To bring about an understanding that will ensure peace in the West for all time between the Indians and our own people. We could use more men like you and your Indian friends here. Thank you. You have uh, nothing to more to fear. You're right, sir. I'm sure the reinforcements I sent for will come to augment my garrison. Well, Tom and I must leave now, but we'll see you again, Colonel. Adios. Adios, my friends. There goes the finest example of American manhood I've ever met, Captain. Yes, sir. But may I ask just who is that masked man, sir? He's a watchdog of liberty and justice in the West, Captain. He's the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.